Ornitrix allows you to send any kind of hair data directly to the renderer to be used inside the rendering or shading pipeline. And in this tutorial, we're going to quickly go over how to do this with the Arnold renderer. I have a basic plane here with hair on it for simplicity, and we will add some hair data and then we will export it to the Arnold renderer to be rendered as a color channel. But you can use the same procedure to render opacity or intensity or really use the, the channels inside the hair for any other shading pipeline that you have. The, any other purpose inside the shading pipeline. So to start I have my uh, hair selected here and above the hair from guides I'm just going to go and add a generate strand data operator and I'm just going to generate three separate channels to represent the R, G and B color and I'm going to create a new channel it's going to be per strand I'm going to name it um, maybe my color channel or even better let's name it random colors And I'm going to set the sample value count to 3 so that we get R, G and B channels separately. If you just have it as one, you can generate a, a simple scalar channel and pass it into things like uh, opacity or reflectance or anything else. So generation method from constant I'm going to change to random so that we get random colors generated per each strand. And the rest of the values are okay as they are. So with these channels generated, I'm going to select the top furball shape over here and I'm going to expand the render export group. In here I'm going to specify the name of the channel that I want to export. So I'm going to export all those three channels as a single one. I'm just going to name it random color again. But this can be any name that you want. You just have to remember what you named it here. Instead of scalar, I'm going to change this to color and I'm going to press the plus sign here and select all the three channels and put them from the left to the right. So the channels that are selected over here will be the ones that are exported to the renderer. And it is important to preserve the order here that you export them in, but if you have many, many channels, you can choose and pick which ones to export and in which order. Once I'm done, I'm going to press confirm and you can see that we have the random color with these three channels participating in it. This random color is the user attribute that we will export directly to the renderer. On top of this hair, I have previously assigned a Arnold hair shader. I'm going to open my uh, hyper shade here. Inside the hyper shade, you can see that we have the standard hair shader here. And at the moment, it has the default parameters and it doesn't have anything wired into it. So the next thing I will do is I will go into the utility dropdown and into the shader, I'm sorry, into the user data group. And from here, I'm going to select the user data color. If you are exporting a single channel, you would use the data float or uh, integer or anything else. But because we're exporting three, we're using color. So in the color here, in the options of this user data color node, we have the attribute setting. And in here, we want to write in the name that we have used to the previously exported hair channel. So that was a random color. I'm just going to go back to my hair node and make sure that I have specified the random. Yes, it's random color, not colors. So I did this correctly here. I'm just going to put color. And now I'm going to wire the out color uh, output into the diffuse color slot of my standard hair shader. And this should be enough. Uh, I'm just going to adjust the settings of my uh, shader so that we actually get the diffuse color. If I go here, it is set to zero right now. I'm just going to change this to one. And the next thing I'm going to do is just render my scene. And as expected, each hair strand has a random color assigned to it. Again, you can create multiple hair data nodes like this and pipe them into different uh, sh uh, shader slots. And this doesn't even have to be the same material as the hair. You can export these channels to any other object or material within the scene. The important thing to remember again is to add one or more of these exported channels inside of your top node of your hair stack, which is the hair shape. So use this technique to gain a great control over your shading pipeline with Ornitrix and Arnold and other renderers.